I can't go out and kill every native species myself. I can kill them very quickly. I've got a Wisconsin, uh, Washington Conservation Corps training, and I, I'm a professional landscaper as well, but I, <laughs> there's only one of me. So um, that's why it's important to have all of your eyes and all of your arms and your wits and your sense of humor as we kind of wade into fighting this big fight. Um, I'm also not a zealot about it. Um, <laughs> this just last, last weekend I was helping print an orchard, and we we're gonna go volunteer a bit, and my buddy's like, I don't wanna be a plant fascist today. Uh, let's just do this like agricultural work. I don't see it that way. It's, I mean, I think that we have really important reasons that we do prevention and eradication of some certain species, but we're not trying to return ourselves to some pre-settlement time. It's just not possible. And so thinking that that's what you're doing, you're gonna spend a lot of time, a lot of work doing things you can't achieve. So picking your battles is really important, and that's kind of the, the main thrust of my entire talk and kind of how I look at this stuff is don't waste your time fighting battles you can't win, but know that that early prevention and that uh, stitch in time um, can really make a huge difference. So how, how about dandelions? Do dandelions cause harm environmentally and economically to Wisconsin? Are they an invasive species? They're not listed, I'll tell you that, that's kind of a hint. <laughs> but you know, you can say they're a weed and you fight them viciously and they're causing all this nuisance of dandelion seeds and green and gold in your yard. And I say, hey, I like green and gold, you know, it's fine. Um, but so, you know, they're not really, they're not escaping into our, into our wildernesses. They're not choking out our ponds. They're not blocking our sewer grates. So there may be something aesthetically you don't like, but they're not doing that damage. So things that are aggressive natives that people don't like, like the wild grape that clams up on stuff, wild, um, wild cucumber, all these vines. Again, people are like, oh, these things are invading my, my, my forest. And I'm like, well, they're taking up a niche in your forest, but because they have been around forever, we don't consider them invasive species. You can say they're an aggressive native, and you can make that choice on how you want to manage your land. But it's important for me to tease apart an aggressive native from an invasive species. There are usually things that come from other parts of the world, and that's kind of the classification. Therefore, they're not endemic or like from originally Wisconsin. And they're gonna be usually really aggressive. They're, so the question was about garlic, garlic mustard, just pulling all the time. I mean, you can pull and for seven years and it keeps on setting seed, you can never get all of it. And so that's a, a really basic important principle in invasive species stuff is um, do as little disturbance of the soil as possible because they are the ones that are arguing that can be there. They usually have some a type of, some, like that one has a chemical control that seems to affect the soil quality, so not as much germinates around it. Um, so that's kind of adaptive management. People have been pulling for years. Um, I would recommend, if you wanna do a really nice, you can cut it for sure with, with like a weed whacker and just kinda knock its energy out, especially cause it's a, it's a, um, it's a, that's a biennial plant, right? It lives for two years. So if you can knock out those flower stalks early on or kind of like hit it when it's tender. Um, also, a weed torch is really cool, which is like a propane tank with a big flamethrower end on it. And you just nuke the top of it. Um, so that works really, really well. Um, also, horticultural vinegar. You can go to, uh, to uh, Young's. I know they have some. It's, it's made, from vi made from wine uh, leavings and it's like a 30% acetic acid, so it will top burn the plant without doing any systemic plant damage to your soil. It does induce, like, induce like, a, a lower pH, um, but there's ways, because you can't hand pull it all, you can't cut it all. I do have the surveyor notes from the Public Land Survey of Wisconsin from 1833 for Fitchburg, and if you read the surveyor notes, that land was observed as gently rolling, prairie grasses and indigo and rosin, and there were burr oak trees, and there was none of the invasive shrubs that you see around here. And I would suggest that if you do have a big problem with invasives, um, the fact that there wasn't, there weren't very many trees here before there was settlement indicates it burned and it burned very frequently. Mm. And if you reintroduce fire to wherever you're trying to restore, you'll get a lot farther along than if you just keep pulling weeds. So this is our invasive shrub honeysuckle. Um, so we can pass these around. They have these um, kind of, you know, these trumpety, the flowers are now fading, but they have these kind of beautiful tufted, I don't know, kind of wispy looking. Um, they have long, you know, long flutes. The, the bees do like these things. The birds, they, they do actually have some pollen in them and whatnot. So, you know, it makes these massive monocultures. It leaves out before a lot of other stuff in Wisconsin. And that's one of the biggest, that garlic mustard has that advantage as well. Um, a lot of the stuff that 
you know, they're from a place that's warmer and generally a safer bet to set leaves in like March. When our oak trees have just barely set leaves by like, you know, mid-April. Why this stuff's such a big problem is we're seeing this and also glossy buckthorn, common buckthorn. They are taking our recruitment of our native trees to almost zero. It's really sad. I mean, and I guess I shouldn't say that, but especially oaks. Um, so because this stuff will be like this forever, it takes up every niche that you would otherwise have for a sapling oak or a, a young cherry. Um, you know, our maples are doing okay because they can, they can live in the shade, but that means that all of our habitat is moving more towards these things that can survive in shade and are not the classic kind of oak savanna um, dominated forest that you'd otherwise see in this part of the world uh, in the last like 200 years. This is a uh, bull thistle. And the way you can tell, we have a couple of native thistles. We do have native thistles as well, just cause it's like um, spiky. I wouldn't say you couldn't necessarily kill it. Um, these ones have these big fins coming off the sides of them and they're super hairy um, as you can see and they're super gnarly <laughs> so uh, they grow up big and tall um, yeah and so if you can find these like kind of protruding spike rows on the uh, on the stem of the plant itself then that's going to be your bull thistle now bull thistle luckily if I'm if I'm lucky here um, I can pop this stuff just right out of the ground this is a honker should get my gloves on, but I'm working without a safety net. Oh yeah. Okay, so you come around, you know, and you pop this tapper out of the ground. Okay. Now it's also now if it's Canadian and a lot of these anyways, they're gonna send these runners out. So the best you can do to track these puppies down, that's what you want. Just one of my thoughts is yeah. I have a friend who's trying to. You know, turn some of his uh, open fields into prairie, and mm -hmm. et cetera. And, um, you know, we ask contracts with DNR sure. doing that. But one of the things I was interested in is, is the woods, but he doesn't have any seedlings. Right. But it's not because of this, it's because of the deer. Yes. So they're also destructive. So, That's a really good point. So there's no yep. renewal of the trees exactly. because of the deer. Yeah. So, so it's like kind of, you know, what do you do with that? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So step one, you're right, is we, we're getting like, we're getting hit from both sides because the deer don't prefer honeysuckle and buckthorn. They prefer oaks, they prefer cherry, okay? So, because they're also from here, so, so they're still in the food web, and so they're actively suppressing native plants while ignoring the invasive plants. It's a double whammy. So you